Good morning. Today we're going to the Amalfi Coast, Positano, and Pompeii. It currently is 6.35 in the morning and I have a snooze set because we have to be downstairs at like 6.45. We ordered room service, expensive room service. I have fried eggs and bacon, a cup of orange juice, and I'm going to scarf this down. I can be downstairs in time to go um, get on the bus. It's a long day, a long trip but I think it'll be really, really nice. It's always supposed to rain a little bit and I hope it stays that way, uh, but we'll see. And I think it'll be a good day. So let's get to eat and then get downstairs. like this. Look at give all the cars and everyone on the tour. Mariah goes to Capri. Capri. A lot of people go to Capri too for vacation. So this is a gorgeous, gorgeous view behind me. My goodness. Let me get me out of it and put this back on. Actual water. I mean look at how look at those waves. Uh, I don't know if you can see them from here. There are people all on the beach. People all on the beach down there and around there in the blue chairs. My goodness. Bones of my As you're driving along the coast, you'll find many like lemonade stands, uh, postcard stands, oh, and just a bunch of different areas. But as you come out, boom, you have Positano right here, right in front of you. And look at all of the houses and the cliffs. And then out, you'll see all kinds of different boats. So pretty. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? Like the Kama Sutra of Italy? Right next to the statue of Virgin Mary? Yeah, so there's some questionable stands, but most of them just sell limoncello or some type of real you know, water, chip snacks because it is quite a long drive. From Rome, we've been driving for how long? Since maybe like 7 a.m. And now it's about 11. And it's 12, so about five hours, and we hit up Sorrento, and now Positano will probably get a better view, but I like it from up here. It's quite nice. We are driving down the cliffs of Positano, and all those gorgeous pillars you see on the cliffs. Here we are, just driving through. The roads are quite narrow. Think about it. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's back to back traffic on both ends. Cars and motorcycles are packed tightly in here. And we are this close to the cliff. Watch that next building. Wow. <laughs> So we stopped in Positano for a break and we're just walking around. You see the beautiful coastline driving, but what does it actually look like on the inside? Well, here we are. We've got some gelato and we're just walking through the narrow streets of Positano. There's a lot. It was good to them. There are a lot of clothing stores, a lot of shoe stores. There's a couple of jewelry places and 
the streets are steep, so make sure your shoes have some great traction in them. I mean, look at this place. It's gorgeous. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Shops. You can go to restaurants here too. Everything is so neatly tucked into the cliffs. You can buy art. <laughs> and again, it is quite a hike. More jewelry. Ristorante Palazzo. You can dine here. You could probably spend, a, you know, maybe a few days in Positano if you wish. Getting here might be a little treacherous because of the cliffs, but overall it's really beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous and picturesque. So, we're going to continue to explore. I'm going to continue to eat this gelato. I got walnut and strawberry. It's great. I think Marcy got vanilla and walnut, two on a cone. The walnut was really good. Vanilla, eh. Yeah, walnut's great. So if you go to Colina in Positano, get the walnut ice cream or the walnut gelato. It's really good. Look out to all the yachts on Positano there. You can either go to the right or to the left. So which way are we gonna go, right or left? There's a lot to do. There's a disco club, music on the rocks. Um, let's see, Rafael Mora Positano. There is parking here, but you almost have to park within the rocks. It's very uh, tight. There are also tour buses. I suggest, highly suggest a small group tour, just because, again, the hills are a little bit treacherous and it's nice to have a smaller group to get to know um, as you're driving through. So we're gonna continue on this way. So you can see the rocks right next to you as you're going around. Insane. And here are the staircases that lead to certain restaurants. You can go in, you can go out, you can go up, you can go down. And this is what Positano looks like from the inside. And more of Positano. We are actually closer to the beach now. And again, look at all the beautiful buildings popped up. You know, folks getting married and whatnot, taking photos. Here is a map of where we are in the island. You can go on day trips to Capri and the Amalfi Coast. There is black sand here. Here it's very hot as well. And again, it's not allowed to stop on the path. It's not quite a photo beach, so it looks like we have to continue on down. There are all kinds of boat rentals here. And all kinds of... Yeah, so I'm not stopping. <laughs> so again, it's this is straight rock and dark sand. Okay. That was Look fun. at this. Yeah, so definitely wear shoes. This is straight rocks. <laughs> straight rocks. But and the waves are pretty strong it looks. We're walking the streets of Positano and it's hot. It's very hot. At first, at the top of the cliffs, it's nice and cool. There's a great breeze, but as you get closer to the water, it gets baking hot. So we're just like hanging out on these um, steps in a just random hallway trying to cool off. It's like the coolest areas are, of course, the ones that are completely shaded from top to bottom. And if you can find 
a space just to stand underneath um, like a pergola of trees and brush and leaves and branches. Those are super cool because the plants will naturally cool the building and they'll naturally cool the area. So if you need time to sit down, those are perfect spots. Uh, get your squats in, get your calf raises in because there are lots of hills and stairs, <laughs> steep stairs. But once you just take your time, you'll be fine and uh, bring some water and dress lightly and then you'll survive Positano. Uh, here's the view from here while I'm at it. So you've got these narrow hallways and just the beautiful cliffs in view. And then you've got banks, you know, different shops and more winding hallways <laughs> leading all the way down to the beach. Once we're done here, we're gonna hike all the way back up to the van and hopefully not get too sweaty on the way up. Oh. There you go, walking back up to my left are the hills of Positano and there are cute little shops. I love the lemon themed clothes. I mean, that's so cute. Yeah, that's adorable. different fashions. There's a lot of cute like lace, linen, cutout dresses like this is adorable. This is my favorite, Boutique Luisa. I love this store. There we go. Boutique Luisa. Oh, they had the cutest things. I mean, look at how cute these jumpers are. Oh, adorable. And then these gorgeous little hats and little dresses. I love it. But we need to get up there along this hill right now. So here we go, walking up, walking, walking, walking up the hill. This is what I mean by the inclines, like, it's quite a march. Which is a roughly about 95% uh, okay. alcohol. It smells delicious. Okay. But yep. we um, shall um, see. Do um, you want it separate or add it? Whatever's it's best for you, buddy. Oh. Best for you. Oh. Wow. <laughs> 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 that's that's strong. <laughs> the flavor is all there, that's but it is good. so raw. Oh, oh, I went to the I was finished lunch. It was delicious. It's um, Papa Pomodoro. For the appetizer along with spaghetti with fresh tomato sauce for the entree and for the dessert uh, limoncello uh, liqueur whoo sweet to the lips but fiery going down now we have to get back on the bus and we are headed to Pompeii this um, garden is so beautiful our lunch location is picturesque and idyllic so pretty but let's get back on the bus
plants and the flowers are so beautiful. Oh, they're gorgeous. I just love this art. You get to see the sea, all of that is the sea. Ah, gorgeous. These classic stone steps, which are everywhere. <laughs> Pompeii, and this is where they took all of the goods and the jewels up this steep hill. That's where we're about to hike now, and Hector has got some legs on him. He can walk like a champ. We all have to keep up. So let's go. Let's keep up with Hector. All right, let's go. You can walk, Hector. I love it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I heard you. <laughs> he walked so quick. Hector, we have to run after him. With regards to the origin and development of the Christian Basilicas. I don't need to tell you, you all know back then, no churches. Mm -hmm. We all know the Christian religion became legal over 300 years after Christ, with the Emperor Constantine. Where is then the connection between the building back then and the churches are nowadays? Back then, the Basilica. A Greek word, the house of Basileus, the king. And mm -hmm. we all know the king was back then the supreme, the judge. Yeah. Eminently back then the seat of the law court. Who is at present? Our supreme, our judge, the king of the kings, our lord. Mm -hmm. That's the connection, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, going in, by the way, you will immediately recognize, I'm not kidding, <laughs> the layout of our churches. Mm -hmm. The same one of the ancient Basiliki. You have a look, very often, from a sidewalk to the other, big stepping stones, the crosswalks, for the convenience of the pedestrians when crossing the street. Mm -hmm. You did pay attention, I'm sure. Plus, between them, the wheels ruts, the wagon ruts. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, they had also the function of what you call today in the States, speed bumps. <laughs> I am not kidding. Slow That's your wagon to down. slow down the speed of the chariot. Please. And the white stones in between acted like street illumination. Whereas the poles on the side of the ground acted like um, water drainage as well as uh, places to put your torches. This is inside the basilica. Yeah, they've been excavating for over 200 years and still uncovering because of the ash from the volcano that hit. They didn't, they weren't, the Pompeians weren't killed by lava, it was the ash that produced a chemical. And once that chemical was emitted, people started choking and dying, and then their bodies were calcified. And their bodies liquefied, but the ash preserved. The shape, which is now filled with plastic. Vegetables, fruits, and so we went with. Right over there. And take a look, the building I'm pointing up, made almost exclusively of brick, the mm -hmm. temple worshipped to the emperors. Obviously, mm -hmm. from Caesar Augustus onwards. You know why? Caesar Augustus, the great founder of the Roman Empire, the first mm -hmm. Roman emperor. Here, 
See the beautiful marble doorway over there? Yes. The main access to the wool market. And another important public building over there, Southeastern Corner Comitium, the hall for the municipal election. Mm -hmm. You did hear me, ladies and gentlemen, the most imposing temples, mm -hmm. the most important public buildings around. Go back with your mind and see back then what the going and coming of people. Yeah. Citizens of all sorts, among them a lot of merchants. I'm sure you heard in room, the forum was basically the market square. Mm -hmm. All of the preserved artifacts from Pompeii. So I this did is, tell you, this is you where know, the food was stored. Area for agricultural produce. Yeah. Store, Today, storage area for agricultural area. produce. See what they wanted the other jars for wine. And those jars. And so on. So eating from all over. The Spread up among stores. them other original stuff, such as the white marble mm -hmm. tables, tops, other mm -hmm. containers over here. See, in the corner, both made of lava, made of marble for grinding. Mm -hmm. Missing are the harbor of Pompeii. And interesting as well, can you see that white marble statue of a woman? We call those women still today in the south of Italy, not so much in the north, pretty. Well, I tell you, still today in the south of Italy, when somebody dies, we engage women, you know, that dress for crying for the dead. Special mourners. I, I heard in Los Angeles, <laughs> mourners. Back to the pond, before you go on asking me about it, the rainy water, ladies and gentlemen, was back then really precious. Until the construction of the Roman aqueduct, which took place Man, much later, the somehow they had to capture the rainy water. <laughs> now imagine the atrium, that area, covered by a roof. But how? With the inward slopes. The opening in the middle. The rainy water ran into the corresponding pond and from there down to the system. That was the system they used back then into the house. The bakery is around the corner to the right. Now they're quite advanced housing systems and now we're gonna check out the bakery, which is right around the corner. See where baked goods were made. Oh, look at this bakery. I hope you work for the CNN. Yes, oh, I have a blog. <laughs> I love this. I was hoping to become famous. Oh, one day. <laughs> one day, Hector. C A V E K V C A N E M. Beware of the dog. Not only the Latin inscription. <laughs> and we know why. <coughs> Back then, not many, the citizens able to read. Mm -hmm. So imagine, that Latin inscription wasn't enough huh? as a warning. Mm -hmm. That's why they, add, they added, see, the picture of a dog. Careful, mm -hmm. stay away. We have a big, dangerous watchdog, guard dog. This is the largest house on the block that we're going to go into right now. It was over 20,000 square feet. Wow. Here's one of the two entrances. The conversation between the two this house must have been magnificent. We have different atriums and rooms. And it has two gardens inside this magnificent house. It was an aristocratic family. 
to the nearest imperial family in Rome. Oh. You are looking. Imagine how beautiful was the floor yes. of this area here. Unfortunately, it's huge. Oh. Huh? Oh, it's still on spot. You can still see some it's of the so colors. Yeah. You can still see some of it. Mm. They had a whole garden in the middle of the area. Let's see what it is. This. What? The conversation. Mm. The conversation. Well, wow. look at nice. the ancient great Greek master with few, relatively few figures, give us the impression of two armies. We are inside the bathhouse. This is where the men section would come and sit. And on the left, they would enter through this door and dress in this area here. Take a seat on the bench and wait for their turn. Steamy. The hot bath, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, by the way, we can see over there a rectangular bathtub for about 15 people. Facing here, over there, have a look, made of an only huge marble block, a fountain. A fountain from which splashed back then running cold water. The temperature was here really hot. People were in need of cooling off, of refreshing them. Look at the central heating system. See this mosaic floor? Still at present, it is pulled by means of sharp green pillars. They even had logos back in the Pompeians region. This is the ancient logo of a delivery company. Here you have the two men on the left and right delivering a bale to homes. They had company logos here to let you know what businesses were in each of uh, these uh, storefronts. The businesses let you know what's in each of these storefronts. That is so cool. Ancient logos back in the day. And now we carry on our Pompeii tour. So we've seen a lot so far. We've seen the bakery, we've seen the temple, we've seen the main square, we saw the storehouse, we saw the baths, we saw a restaurant. This is pretty cool. Pompeii is pretty cool, especially with a guide. Because the guides can give you so much more information, whether it's an audio. But I like the personality of our guide, Hector. He adds a little flair to the information to make it even more interesting. Meat, fish, vegetables, and so on. In the area there have been uncovered a lot of fish bones. That's where the fish were cleaned, was what? Originals, the limestones brought rising around the Fish house. Area. Missing, but above them, Along with the, the storm. storm.